Hey everyone, welcome to Drumeo. Today we are joined by a living legend, Mr. Bernard Purdy. I never thought I'd be saying that <laughs> in a lesson on Drumeo, so thank you so much for coming out. It's my plasma, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys don't know who Bernard Purdy is, uh, the credit list is extremely long. I wrote down a few just so I could give you a small taste. Uh, he's played with James Brown, Dizzy Gillespie, Aretha Franklin, Miles Davis, Cat Stevens, Hall & Oates, Bette Midler, Steely Dan, <laughs> Herbie Hancock, B.B. <laughs> King. Like, how many albums have you been on? You I'm actually on over 4,000 albums. Over 4,000 albums, and today you add one more notch to that with yeah. a drummy <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> I like it, I like it. Cool. So, um, and Bernard also has a new book out called Let the Drums Speak. Maybe we can get a quick shot, like a nice close-up here on this camera. Right here. There oh, we right go. Oh, yeah, there yeah, we go. I know him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. it's a book I got. I just got a little while before the lesson, and I've been going through it, and it's great. And I wanted to read one quick little oh, passage. Be my from guess, it. Man. Just one sentence. I, I like it. Like... <laughs> you can keep it on all the time. <laughs> Okay, this is on page 18, and this is, this is uh, so telling of like your, how you play, and it, it seems like the, your whole feel, your whole groove and, and stuff, and I love this line. It says, musicianship is much more than just technique. It demands an attitude of hum a humility in the face of great natural gifts, and at the same time, it demands the confidence to do what is necessary to make the music come alive. Yeah. I think that is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, Mine. thank you. Yeah, thank, thank so, you very much. Yeah, so if you guys are watching this on YouTube afterwards, what we're going to do is I, I actually got two copies of the book, and I want to give one away to the community. So, Whoa. If you yeah. <laughs> so if you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, just leave a comment right below the video. Just tell us your favorite part of the lesson, and we're going to do a drawing, a completely random drawing, and we're going to mail you a, a copy of Bernard's book. This book is actually signed. Can I show them the signature? Yeah. Yeah? Hey, okay, this is actually a signed copy as well. All right? Hey! <laughs> so, Olé. Bernard, again, thank you so much for coming out. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here. And we're going to talk about a lot of things. You're actually going to take us on a little bit of a, a journey. Yes, I am. Yeah. I most certainly is. <laughs> and this is really interesting. You, as you were warming up, we got a chance to see it. And... Uh, it's great. You have your own unique style, exactly how you teach, and uh, it's really, really interesting. So, Well, thank you. Yeah, so what are you going to show us today? Well, I'm going to show you what I do when I sit down to practice and how and why it's taken me so long to actually do this kind of experimenting mm -hmm. because I need people to know and understand that you never get tired of practice. You should never. You should be able to like what you do. Yeah. Have fun with it. When you have fun with it, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. Because the whole picture, as far as I'm concerned, as a drummer, you need to have fun. And when you go to do your job, please have fun. Enjoy what you do. And definitely, definitely love it. Like I do. I love it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take you on this journey. This is how I sit down to practice. But I want to say one thing to you. Under normal circumstances, I don't do mine as slow as I used to. I just took it up a little bit of a notch. And that notch is where the feel is. But the attitude is the same, no matter what you decide to do. Music. Ha! Ha! Yes. On normal circumstances, I get all of my students to actually play it slower. Mm, mm, mm. But the biggest thrill is knowing where one is. Yes. Once you know where one is, you can do anything. But please, whatever you do, have fun with it. And it makes everything work. 
hey. Yes. Now, now I'm going to take you on the journey. And don't worry, because on the journey, we're going to play a little jazz. We're going to play a little funk. A little good old-fashioned feel. Swing. I don't know. I might take you, whether I take you to New Orleans or Brazil. One of them. Maybe both. Now it's time to start having this kind of fun. Hey, hey, hey. Whoa, ho. Mm. Mm. This journey, you're going to have three tempos. And only three. One will be up by ten. Mm. For all you uh, folks that uh, know about the metronome and all that kind of stuff. Ten clicks. No.
start to remember that so you'll know where the backbeat is. The backbeat is on three of each bar. With all the things that are going on, you just got to remember. It is also the best way is keep it slow. I'll break it down a little bit more and more. Oh, yeah. Because the bass drum is so important. Also started from my locomotion, from the train. Woo woo! That train whistle that used to come by my house for years. But it, you have to find out as you go along the simplicity of it. The ghost notes. It's controlled 
rebounds. You remember now. Ah. The halftime. One, two, three, four. One, two. That's the halftime of part. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. But the halftime. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. weather gonna take you to New Orleans or Brazil. I don't know, I gotta make up my mind yet. I haven't made up my mind yet. What I do, you'll find out how easy it is from the rehearsal that you do. But we got to remember the practicing is worth it. One, two, three, four.
to remember where you started. You also got to remember where one is. My little exercise that I do when I have to play and get all everything out of my system. And I love it. I love it. That was, that was incredible. <laughs> well, thank you. I feel very lucky getting to sit here and witness that. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, that's been one of my practice sessions that I've done for the last <laughs> years. <laughs> so I feel happy that it still works for me. Right. There you go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Cool. Wow, that was incredible. So I hope you guys, uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. That was uh, de definitely something different, unlike anything we've had on Drum Year before. And, and uh, it's great to just listen to you play. Well, thank you. Yeah. I know a lot of people are commenting on the fact that you were playing and talking and it didn't seem to disrupt the playing. No, because I had to learn how to do just that. Right. I have loved teaching, and I didn't know yeah. that I was a teacher in the beginning. But I sing. I have thousands upon thousands of songs in my head. So when I go to do my solos, yeah. I got to remember what song and what venture, what category <laughs> that I'm going to do right. at, for my solos. So I never like to do one kind of solo. So, But at the same time, when you're in a certain mood and a certain feel, yeah. you don't mix up all these kind of rhythms. Right. You really don't because most people are not going to understand it. Yeah. So you take people, and I try to do just that, take you on a journey that works for me. Yeah. And that's where my practicing comes in, that I think about what I need. Four bars, eight bars, 12, 16, 32. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Because with what I do, I'm still counting. And that is the key. Mm -hmm. You must learn how to count. Mm -hmm. Without it, you're going to be up the creek. Yeah. Because you're not going to remember where you are and what you are here to do, except make a fool of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody can't do 10,000 things at once. I understand that. Yeah. But that doesn't stop you from having the feel or the rhythms for all these different kinds of music that we have. Drummers are supposed to know rhythms because their job is to keep everybody else focused yeah. in the band. But that doesn't stop you from having fun because that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And when you're playing drums, always think about the bass player. Mm -hmm. Bring the bass player along with you and think about what the bass might be doing to help support what you do, especially when you're playing. Yeah. And then, because the other point is, is that as a drummer, you got to give everybody their attention. Yeah. You have to. You got to support them, and you got to give them what they want, when they want it, when they need it. For me, that's the joy of playing the drums. I know what to do to give the guitar, the piano, the vocal. Doesn't matter. Give them what they want, what they need. Mm -hmm. And it also brings things out of me because I know the songs, because I know the rhythms. Yeah. But I go one step further. I learn the melodies. And the melodies help me to do the little teeny tiny things when you want to mess around. <laughs> Knowing melodies, hey, you can't help but be a good drummer. Yeah. You have to. Because when you know the melodies, you're going to stay out of the way. Yeah. It becomes key. Yeah. That's cool. 
Cool. Um, so I want—I have one question I want to ask you, and I just want to bring it back to the book. For those of you who are wondering, uh, you can hold it up there. You can do a little display. Uh, this is Bernard's new book, Let the Drum Speak. And I know I totally neglected in the beginning to tell you guys where you could actually buy it. So you go to his... I'm sorry. Oh, it's <laughs> um, all right. Go to bernardpurdy.com, and on his website you can purchase the book. And... Uh, yeah, you can get your own copy. I know a lot of people are asking that. And you're getting T-shirts soon. There. Yes. Okay. T-shirts will be out yeah. when, probably uh, new, by this summer. Okay. The new T-shirts from Jim Marshall. Great. Great. The guy that took pictures of uh, uh, Hendrix. Yeah. And folks like it. Well, he took pictures of me <laughs> years great. ago. Just a couple of years ago. <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell the folks as many. Just a couple of years ago, you know. <laughs> Yeah, we have uh, assigned the contract, and uh, cool. they're very happy. And uh, pictures that they chose, and and good, t good T-shirts. I like the color. I nice. like everything. I like all the design, and I like looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, cool. God. Um, so we're going to get to some questions now. Before we do that, I just want to let you guys know about a little bit about Drumio. We do this sort of thing on, well, not this sort of thing, because this is very unique, but we do <laughs> lessons on Drumio every day. And uh, if you guys want to try it out, you can try it free for 30 days. You, do go, to, you go to drumio.com forward slash trial, and it's absolutely free for the first 30 days, and, and you can see all what we got going on in the members area. Um, but let's, let's get to some questions, if that's all right. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got the answers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one more thing. For, for those of you who don't know how to ask questions live, it's right below the video. You just click submit a question, type your question in, and hit submit. And uh, for those of you watching on YouTube later, remember you just post your comment right below the video, say your favorite part about the lesson, and you get a chance to win one signed copy of Bernard's new book, Let the Drums Speak. So make sure you guys do that. And uh, I'm sure you'll love reading the comments about what everyone loves about this lesson. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's the nicest part. You know, <laughs> let me know I'm doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> All uh, wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is good. This is from Levi the drummer. Levi. Yeah, what makes you the most happy when you're playing drums? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what makes me the most happy when I'm playing drums? Yeah. Being able to play time. Mm. Being able to have fun with what I do. And being able to smile because that is half the battle because I'm in seventh heaven enjoying what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And when you enjoy what you do, your whole innards feel good. Smile. Be able to smile and like all these different figures, all these different phrases. Yeah. Just enjoy yourself. And your whole body smiles with you yeah. because it's all good. It's all good. Because that stops the, you from being, uh, as they call, inhibited. You don't have to inhibit yourself for what you want to do. You be able to play. Yeah. You need to enjoy what you do at all times. Because everybody else is, all the singers are, all the horn players, and when they do something, they make themselves feel good. You're supposed to feel good also, because that's your job. Yeah. You do your job, and everything works for everybody. Cool. Uh, this one's from Obi-Wan. He says, uh, I could watch you groove all day. I <laughs> I like it. I but, like it. <laughs> but my question is, is it possible to groove at faster tempos? Can you groove at faster tempos? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and there's your answer. And you know what? When we finish some of these questions, I'm going to show you that. The reason I do at the tempo that I do is because I need to be relaxed so I can get all of the crisis and anything that's happened to them. Yeah. So my whole mannerism is in the relaxed mode. Fast ain't the thing that's in, but I will do it for you just to show you. You can still smile, you can still enjoy what you do, even at the fast tempo. 
but you're not going to get the dynamics that you get at 80%, 70 to 80% of the songs. That's your tempo right here. Hey! Mm, uh, 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 uh. That's what the songs, yeah. that's the one that you remember. You don't usually remember. But I'm going to do it just to show you that you can groove at the faster tempo without a problem. I'll come to it shortly. Okay, great. Uh, this one's from Kavir. He says, it's such an honor to be here with you today, Bernard. You're an inspiration to us all. Of the 4,000 albums you've been on, which was the most memorable for you and why? <laughs> you knew it was coming. <laughs> yes, I know. Listen, please listen very, very carefully to what I'm going to say. First of all, I am going to play safe. Okay? Now, with all of the different people that I have played with, I spent almost 25 years with Aretha Franklin. Now, for those of you who do not know the diva, Aretha Franklin, I'm sorry. I am sorry. But I'm going to play safe because there are so many hit records that I've done, but every artist out there loves Aretha Franklin. So why not me? I am playing safe because Steely Dan, I, oh man, I could take you around the world. Take you around the world. <laughs> but I'm the safe man. <clears throat> I am the safe man. Aretha Franklin moves me, has always moved me, and I've moved her because that was my job, <laughs> moving her around. I loved it. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. That's cool. Uh, this one's from Greg Moore. He says, Bernard, we're lucky, we're lucky in that we have your playing to inspire us. Question, where do you turn for your inspiration? Well, my inspiration, I'm sorry that you didn't know him, but my teacher, Mr. Leonard Haywood, every time I sit down to play, I pray a little bit that I might be able to continue what I am doing, and give it back to all of the young people who doesn't have the chance and the opportunity. Yeah. This is a different world now. It's a different world. The internet has opened the doors and put light into all kinds of families all over the world. Yeah. We didn't have this when I was coming along. So I was always taught to give back when you are successful about what you've done. Mm -hmm. Give back. Well, my teacher, Mr. Leonard Haywood, did that for me. So basically, everything that I do, I owe to him. And I still do. And I really wish that I could take all the credit of all the things that I've done. But I always, I go back to the source. Yeah. And then when I go back to the source, I give it to Mr. Haywood. Yeah. I love him. Loved the man, and for me, I'm sorry that you know people didn't know him, but believe me, he was mm, oh, yeah. one of these hard teachers that didn't take prisoners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean, no prisoners. I know in your, in your book, uh, and this is one question I'd like to ask you. Uh, in, in your book, you said you sat on the steps of, of Mr. Haywood's porch listening to him give drum lessons. And eventually he let you come inside or, or sit in it and listen. And uh, on, the, on the account that you wouldn't say anything ever. And one time, yes. you said something. Oh, and he kicked you out for almost a week. No, three days. Okay. Three days. And, and I want to know, what did you say? What did, you say that what did I say? Because that's, that's the one thing that's not in the book. I cried. <laughs> I cried for three days. Yeah. Not only did I cry, but I went to every one of his students and begged them for him to let me come back. And I promised I would never, ever open my mouth again for anything. Because since I wasn't paying, 
You know, you can't come on somebody else's uh, uh, class yeah. or lesson and open your mouth. The one condition that he said to me, you don't exist, so you do not speak. When I want something from you, I will tell you, okay, Bugsy, play. Yeah. So what am I going to play? I'm going to play exactly what he just got finished trying to get the student to do because I'm right there. I didn't know that these things were hard. I didn't understand why the students couldn't get it. Yeah. And I got it just like that. But somebody else was paying for that lesson. Yeah. So I didn't exist until he wanted me to show somebody about what he's showing them and teaching them. Yeah. Folks, you learn how to shut your mouth. You'll learn it quick when you can't get in. You can't afford to be there. You learn how to <laughs> shut up. But it took, it went beyond that because this is the kind of discipline that you must have yeah. when it comes down to the nitty gritty. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. It's discipline. That's cool. Uh, this one's from Jay Dakeman. Jay is actually a Drumeo instructor as well. Oh! Yeah. Oh. He, sa he says, how do you keep the intensity of your grooves so hard even when you play dynamically? That part is easy. Dynamics is everything, everything to a band. Mm -hmm. Drums, just to the band. Because the whole point is that when you want to get everybody off, when you can move them and shift them around and take them to places that they didn't know they could go, they play twice as hard for you. Mm -hmm. They play twice as much for you because then you you got them the intensity and you rip it up and you and then you wham bring it all the way down. Some folks almost fall on their face because this dynamics is what sells everything. Mm -hmm. Dynamics. So you learn you learn how to use these sticks when you're up in the air and you got your ride cymbal going and everything else is going, and when you got to come out of it so everybody can come back down and start all over again, you come down and whack, hitting that snare drum, and whether you're hitting it one time or two times, and you wake everybody up. Yeah. So dynamically, it's all there. It's in the wrist. All your speed. All your speed is that when you're up there and you want to keep it going, it's in your fingers. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate of your playing. But it's your wrist that gives you all the flexibility, including long jeopardy. Yeah. So you can play for 10 minutes, half hour, hour, two hours, whatever it takes. Because all the rock guys are exhausted when they get off. That's why they don't wear shirts. Want everybody see them sweat. But they are exhausted because they got their hands and their arms are, are running all over the place. And, uh, you know, it, it looks good. It looks good to the public. Yeah. But I guarantee you, you're going to drop your tempo. You're going to lose your place. And you're going to be out there by yourself because when it comes down to when somebody wants to stop, they want you to have a solo, what do you think you've been doing? Yeah. You got no place to go. You have no place to go for your solo. So if you are out here and you up here with all your highs, where are you going to go? Yeah. There's no discipline in that. But you got guys like Steve Smith who... He learned early. Yes, he learned early how to hit, yeah. hit the drums. But he was using his wrists. And when the time comes when he do his solos, he's all over the place. Yeah. And he looks good doing it because half of the things is looks are deceiving. Mm -hmm. Looks are very deceiving. So 
hey, I have fun with mine, but I tell you, the feel, having a positive attitude about what I do is what makes things work. Yeah, cool. This one's from Fred Rico. He says, Bernard, in your opinion, what are the worst things a drummer can do or forget to do if they're looking to become really good at it? Whoa, whoa. What's the biggest mistake, I would guess? Uh, okay. I know that you're not going to want to hear what I'm about to say. The biggest mistake that drummers have is the worst thing that you can possibly do, and that is play with sneakers. Yes, I said it. Playing with sneakers means one thing. You are up on your toes. That's the only way that you're going to be able to feel the vibration that you need to feel. Yeah. You're up on your toes, and that means you're going to drop temples. You're not going to be able to hold temples. So you need leather sole shoes. I don't care whether it's boot, ankle, leather, sole. So you can do this. You can move. You can slide. Have fun with it. And you can also be on your toes. Yeah. That's your ultimate of your playing. And that's your hardness. But that leather sole shoes let you slide on that pedal. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. I never thought you were going to say that. That's. I know most people they and uh, they don't like hearing it. Yeah. Especially the guys who the they out here been doing it for a long time. Right. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was going to add something to it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I might as well since I done I done said it, folks. You must also learn how to sit on your seat. Mm. You must learn how to do what you started out doing in the beginning. Being able to play flat foot, heel and toe, and then on your toes. You can play both at the same time. Most people can't. Because yeah. when you're on your toes, you're usually leaning. Your high hat is not moving, it's not doing and your back, you're going to hurt your back. Yeah. Mother Nature is not going to let you stay there because <sighs> can't breathe. You're cutting off half of your breathing exercise. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I feel sorry for you, but at the same time, I know that you don't want to hear it, but folks, get out of those sneakers. Get out of them. That's great. Okay, this one's from, from <laughs> Drums Mosley. Could you ask Bernard his approach uh, to success in the music industry? As a musician who is just getting into seasonal work, it'd be incredible to hear from such an industry legend. Thanks, Bernard. You're amazing. <clears throat> Whoa. Folks, <clears throat> first of all, learn your craft. Don't go out there halfway. Learn your craft. Learn what you have to do. Learn how to play your instrument. And I don't care whether it's drums or not or whatever. You learn your craft, and then you move on to the next step. And for drummers, we all, every drummer out there, because you've been playing 5, 10, 20 years, you got an attitude. That is what you work for for so long, to be able to have an attitude. Mm -hmm. But folks, and it's okay to have an attitude, but make sure that your attitude is part of being humble. Mm -hmm. You learn to be humble, everything works for you mm -hmm. because you can't get the job. You will not get the job. Learning your craft, being humble about it, you can tell anybody, yeah, I'm a bad motorcycle. And I can do anything, any kind of way. And I don't care 
what you throw at me. I love country. I love reggae. I love blues, funk. Doesn't matter. It is the idiom that you're in when you go for the job. Yeah. You must learn how to speak all of the languages. Mm -hmm. And music is the only language. It is the one language that's worldwide. Yeah. It's all worldwide. That's cool. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful feeling. And learn your craft. I'm right back to the beginning. Learn your craft. And you can do anything. And I mean just that. You can do anything. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. I, I know that... Uh, we, we were actually going to answer and talk about more. Uh, Playing fast, improving fast. Yeah, I want to do that. I actually want to do that for the young person that called. Okay. Because playing fast, I'm sorry. Please don't, and don't get me wrong. We all have to learn how to play fast. But playing fast only means that you're going to get tired so much quicker. And you're going to end up using your arms more because it's, it looks good. Mm -hmm. So where, if you're talking about where you want to put the, the fast one, disco is that between 110 and 120. Disco. But even disco is not being played fast because it's being played halftime. Yeah. And it's being played with the quarters on the floor. Mm -hmm. And you can do things with it. But if you're talking about something and that has to be fast, well, when you're doing 75 or 80, not the 120, you're doing it, that is really fast. Because cutting that into halftime don't usually work too often. Not from 75 to 80. Because from there, the first thing that I think about when it's 75 to 80, I think of ballots. Yeah. I cut that in half. Yeah. That's where I go with it when I have to do that. It makes all the difference in the world. But I'm going to take you into that fast thing. I'll take you up there so you can see. Yes, you do dynamics but they're not so pronounced when it's really, really fast. Okay? All right. Ah. And one, two, three. Because it's hard to breathe. Yeah. Because of the energy that you're putting out. Yeah. So playing fast, eh, yeah. just hard work. Yeah. Just harder, harder work. Cool. <sighs> well, that was that was awesome, Bernard. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to mention a couple things again. If you are interested in picking up a copy of Bernard's book. 
you can go to his website, bernardpurdy.com. Also, remember, if you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, just leave a comment right below, and we're going to be giving one book away to a, a lucky commenter. Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, oh, yeah, if you wanted to uh, check out more about Drumeo, we have a free trial going on. It's drumeo.com forward slash trial. You can try it out for 30 days. We do a new lesson every single day. And there's many, many other things in there, and I'm not going to take up too much of this lesson time with any of that. So definitely check that out. Um, do you mind? Well, first of all, thank you so much. No, oh. man, it's been a it's been a pleasure, and you're welcome back anytime. Thank you. So, I'm, I'm gonna take you up on that. <laughs> you heard him, folks. I'm coming back. Okay. Well, that's same here. You committed <laughs> to us. We commit to you. Um, but do you mind just to play us out? Just play a little bit, uh, like. Three to five minutes, and then as soon as you're you're done, we'll we'll cue the ending. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Oh, all right. Thank you. And if you want to say any final words to anyone, uh, I sorry. To, I want to thank Ron Danette for this drum set. It's a George Way kit, and uh, he he brought it here for this lesson. So I wanted to say. Well, that. I appreciate it because it's really nice. Yeah. It's good sound. Yeah. Good color. We go together, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like red. Yeah. Always did. Oh boy! Yeah. So the drums and the Sabian symbols are, are are great. So thank you all those yeah. sponsors for helping us out. Well, Sabian knew what to send. They they know the sounds that I like. Yeah. See this old thing here, this China boy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Folks, it took me a lot of years. I started out like everybody else. You turn it over, and bam, and hear that Chinese sound. But you never know, see, until you try it. And somebody like me who likes more than one thing on something, the Chinese part is always going to be there. But then I can move up to the ride part of the Chinese. Yeah. And then I can move up to the bell. All of these things, you start to learn how to use symbols. And it took me a few years to understand how the old guys did all these things and, you know, all the different sounds that they get. And for me, so you all know, the one thing that was taught by me, by my teacher, is make people dance. You make people dance, you are automatically got a gig. <laughs> Everybody likes that. And, and boom, ding, ding, boom. And well, I'm gonna take you out. You know what? I'm gonna take you out starting out with New Orleans.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.